Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Cold War Zombies review. I've finally written out a script, so hopefully this review doesn't suck as much as the last one did. Since Forsaken's about to release in a few days, I thought I'd get this review out. If it does end up getting its own trailer, I'll do an analysis. Let's get into the review, and yes, I'll be using the Black Ops 3 soundtrack again for this review. Sorry, but I don't have any other audio files right now. Okay, I will once again be starting this video with visuals slash atmosphere. Uh, Mauerder Toten is by far the most atmospheric map in Cold War Zombies so far. Right from the start, you're dropped into the new dark landscape with the classic World at War music playing in the background. You're given total control of your flashlight, which is super fun, as most of the map is pretty dark before you get the power on. There is a lot more ambient music than the first two Cold War maps have, and certain areas will have unique musical tracks with playing near them, kind of like in the older games. Uh, the combination of the bright and colorful perks, enemies, and wonder weapons with the dark and desolate Moscow makes for great visual contrast. Disciples and Tormentors fit the atmosphere perfectly, and the colorful visual effects go great with the map. The trains are super cool. They're terrifying the first couple times playing the map, and the sound effects are amazing for them. Overall, I think Mauerder Toten completely nails atmosphere, so I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of 10. Definitely the best atmosphere we've had in Cold War Zombies. For map flow slash gameplay, I absolutely love the map progression in Mauer. It's got to be my favorite of Cold War again. You start on top of a building and gradually make your way down under the streets of Moscow to pop out at the other side of the Berlin Wall. Once you're there, you get PAP set up and remove the barrier and you're free to roam the entire map uh, completely freely. Uh, multiple elevations and it never feels like the map is a slog to get across. I was worried about zip lines and ladders being added into round base, but unlike an outbreak, they aren't glitchy and zombies won't throw meat at you when you're using them. Uh, there was a problem at launch where you could get stuck in a zip line, but it's been fixed. Uh, getting set up feels very natural and obtaining Klaus can be easily done by round 10. I think Klaus is an awesome addition to the map and he's my favorite civil protector type AI in Zombies. He has a personality and is important to the story, unlike Civil Protector and Sergeant Adam. Klaus can be upgraded multiple times, along with having his appearance changed, which is also pretty fun, gives him some more personality. Cerberus, the new wonder weapon, is definitely my favorite wonder weapon of Cold War. Now is having a lot of my favorite stuff in Cold War. Uh, Unlike in previous games, to get different variations of Cerberus, you don't need to do any easter egg steps. The zombies will just drop the different variations. And it feels great. It doesn't feel like it's too easy. It, it just feels... Well, it could... I bet you could say it's too easy, but I don't know. I feel like it's great. Really fun. Uh, the quest to obtain it is super easy, and it can also be done by round 10. The UV the UV light steps. There's no steps like that are annoying, like the dartboard in Firebase C. So the gameplay there is very smooth. You're not halted by looking at the computer screen for the dartboard step. But uh, it's the best of both worlds because it has fair steps like the die, but it's a great weapon like the Ray K. There's a lot of good training and camping spots on the map. And the re-addition of traps adds some fun with the trains, but I, they're not as useful as the traps in previous zombie games. They're not as overpowered, probably because there's so much other stuff you can use in Cold War. Pack-a-Punch is a lot more simple than usual. Uh, you just gotta fight a disciple with a bunch of zombies, but it's fun because it plays Avogadro from Alpha Omega, which is a really fun boss fight theme. Uh, overall, I think the map flows greatly, and it's easy to get around. And the gameplay and base setup is fun and flows well. I give Mauerder Toten's map flow slash gameplay a 9 out of 10. Best of Cold War. Again. Okay, now Easter egg slash story. 
This is another aspect where Mauer der Toten is definitely the best out of the three maps we have so far. It absolutely nails its story. There's a sense of urgency as Strike Team has been captured by Omega after the second outbreak easter egg, and we're under Kravchenko's command. I love the interactions between the different members of Omega and Kravchenko, and I find them way more entertaining than Requiem, honestly. The voice actors do a great job, and it has a lot more of the classic Triarch humor from the older games. Each member has a unique attitude and will react to whatever you're doing, as usual, like when you pick up an item. Valentina is probably the most badass villain we've had in Zombies so far because we actually get to interact with her directly and she talks to us throughout the map. Uh, the story ties in perfectly with the intel and it rewards players who have been following it closely. It could be confusing for people not aware of the outbreak easter eggs if they're just going from Firebase C to Mauer, but Zombies always has told its story in a confusing way, so I guess that's normal. Uh, there's a lot of attention to detail and intel throughout the story. The easter egg, I think it's pretty easy, I'm talking about before the boss fight, and it's replayable that flows along with the setup. It might be too easy for some people's taste, but it's very fun and replayable experience with many cool moments, such as when you have to stop the train with Klaus. I would say the easter egg steps leading up to the boss fight are in between D Machine and Firebase C in difficulty, so it's a good balance. Still pretty easy for a uh, zombies easter egg standard, but I like it. For a while the uranium step was bugged, but they fixed it by now. That, that was frustrating for a while because you could not progress past it. The real gem of Mauer de Toten's easter egg is its amazing boss fight. I think it has the perfect difficulty. It won't make you tear your hair out like the first outbreak easter egg before the patch, but it's not too easy like Firebase C's easter egg boss fight. This is this might hold my spot for my favorite zombies boss fight of all time. It makes use of all the core components of zombies. You're constantly moving, making use of your perks and field upgrades, and making sure not to get hit. The boss fight moves all around the map, so it feels like a complete experience. Uh, Valentina's health bar can take quite a while to get through, but it never feels unfair. If you, I was never felt frustrated when I lost the boss fight. It felt like completely fair, and I was just excited to do it again. As long as you're set up with a max pap Cerberus, you can fight your way through with the right movement. Mule Kick comes in clutch during this fight because it's tier upgrade that makes regular zombies drop ammo can be extremely useful. Uh, once completed, the Easter egg feels really rewarding, and there's an easy extra section at the end where you have to help Klaus deliver the bomb into the Dark Ether. You're then rewarded with the ending cutscene that sets up the next map, which we now know to be called Forsaken. I think the story and cutscene... Okay, the, the story and Easter egg are incredibly strong in Mauer, and I think it sets up Forsaken perfectly. I would say the one weak park is how Kravchenko cannot aim for shit when he's trying to kill Strike Team when they're escaping. But other than that, <laughs> the story is... Story and Easter Egg, I would give a solid 9 out of 10. Valentina's boss fight theme is also amazing and definitely one of the greats alongside Avogadro. Uh, the Coffin Dance Easter Egg is also super fun. It's like a... It's very in-depth. You... It's even more, like, disco-themed than D-Machines. And you get to pick a door at the end for a reward, and it's very fun. Overall, I think Mauer der Toten is Cold War Zombies' strongest round-based map yet, and has solid gameplay, story, and easter egg. I'm gonna give Mauer an overall weight... <laughs> not talk an overall rating of 8.5 out of 10 it's got to be my favorite map of black ops cold war and if i were to put it on a tier list i'd put it at a tier and if i were to rank firebase z and d machine i would say d machine would be c plus to b and firebase c would be b uh, most people like D Machine a bit more than Firebase C, but I actually like Firebase C a bit more than D Machine. But yeah, I think it's a really solid map. 
I love it. I've had so much fun with it. I'm looking forward to Forsaken. I know there's a sneak peek of it in the Season 6 trailer, but I'm not going to make an analysis unless it gets its own trailer because it, it's too short of a clip to go over. The Wonder Weapon looks super unique. It's like a melee hybrid Wonder Weapon, and it seems like the director is much more of a villain according to the final Mauer cutscene and the intel. And he's most likely spoilers Eddie, which is also supported by the intel. I'm not going to go over all of it right now. I hope Bubby has a large part in the map's Easter egg. So a story that'd be really funny. It'd be a cool call out to Sledgehammer and Advanced Warfare. But anyway, super excited. Can't wait for Forsaken. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.